there's international law. We're talking about that. The aggregate of states, <coughs> which is a, well, we, we talked about that. The term may be said to include the Christian <coughs> nations of Europe and their offshoots in America, <coughs> with the addition of the Ottoman Empire and so forth and so on. That was in 1856. They finally let allowed a non-Christian nation to be part of their family of nations. It used to be called the flock of nations before that. So we could go on. But I, I wanted to also mention with regard to reconciliation and apology. Reconciliation is a term that comes directly out of the Inquisition. If, if you look it up in the dictionary, you look at the deeper meanings, it means to bring back into submission and to bring back into the church. A heretic could possibly, not very likely, but possibly could renounce the error of their ways, confess their sin, and be brought back into the church. Apology is an interesting term too. We're talking about so many patterns of, of destruction, unfortunately, that uh, Phil has so uh, carefully illustrated with the artwork that was presented. So this is a very difficult thing. It's, it's good to have an acknowledgement of those wrongs, of those harms, but there has to be corrective action taken afterwards. And we're calling upon churches and governments that engaged in these activities to, uh, of, of destruction against our languages and cultures, what I call linguicide, the intentional effort to kill our traditional languages. We're calling on those governments and churches that were involved in that to put as much time, effort, energy, and money and to assisting with the revitalizations of our languages and cultures as they put into attempting to destroy them to begin with. Now this is a very specific <laughs> The other thing too is that the notion of native title is a very interesting one. And the Mabo decision is a very important case. But from a perspective within the United States federal anti-Indian law system. The Johnson versus McIntosh decision of 1823 also acknowledged a kind of native title, which is called occupancy. It's merely a, a right or a title to wander and roam the land. And it is not good as against the discovering sovereign, which is the Christian sovereign. So it's, it's a very interesting thing. And also, I wanted to say that I don't notice any Catholic clergy here. <laughs> or me. really, are you, sir? Thank you. And, and so I'm glad to see you here. Thank you so much for coming. Absolutely, this is fantastic. Because I want to see more of an interfaith dialogue where we really get to start to get to the heart of some of these issues. And where we really actually engage in a, a truth telling with regard to some of this history. I come from the fire of uh, Six Nations with uh, Diane Longboard. Okay. She's been teaching. Terrific, thank you very much, sir, for being here. Now, I also want to uh, mention that the, uh, with regard to the, those Vatican documents, I really see them, I don't agree with this characterization, but from the point of view of the dominating societies and the dominating systems, I really believe that they consider those to be title deeds, title deeds to our indigenous lands and territories. And that they say in 1955, there was a case called Tihitan in the United States. The legal brief filed by the United States government in that case in 1950, that filing was in 1954, specifically laid out all of these arguments that I'm mentioning and that we're all mentioning today. And it said that when the first Christian sovereign arrived, and had a right to acquire the lands of heathens and infidels, that that became the law of the land. And after that time, the Indians or the uh, original peoples only had permission from the whites to occupy. And so these are the kinds of things that we really need to address and redress. And uh, I, I obviously could go on much longer, but I won't out of courtesy to our other panel members. And I really appreciate very much for you coming. And uh, I, I also want to say that we are continuing with our call upon the Vatican, Pope Benedict XVI, uh, to formally revoke 
those capables and to uh, actually undo what has been said into motion. Thank you.